And we're hopefully back. I always have to check. Sometimes Twitch just doesn't want to work. But it still shows me offline at the moment. There we go. There we go. We're good. Although I need to move that back to the front. That needs to go down. There we go. All right. Ah. All right, first things first. I don't want to forget to do that. Uh, it was literally just some almonds. <laughs> some almonds, a bathroom break, and that was it. Because like I said, I'm just not... For whatever reason, I'm not actually that hungry. So, Which for me is very rare. <laughs> Normally I'm hungry all day and I just have to ignore it. <laughs> Brain food, indeed. At least I think they're almonds, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Some sort of nut. Some sort of salty nut. Take that out, you will. Looks like the times are a little more spread out than I'm used to seeing. We are on the medium tire now, though. <laughs> I just have to be careful how often I eat super salty stuff because I've. I have to be careful of uh, kidney stones. After you've had one, it's very easy to have more. Let's just say, after that one, I don't ever want to have any more. Because it was awful. I did, and I promptly ignored it. <laughs> like I said towards the... towards the end of practice before. I, I have a feeling it's just a situation where I'm not good in Sector 1. Or I'm not as good as I could be in Sector 1. <laughs> um, I, I really think that's just the case. I'm just not as good through Sector 1, so I need to take advantage of 2 and 3. That's really what it felt like at the end of practice. And also the Panos is down on power. <laughs> No, the car is the car is completely fine. It's literally just me not getting through sector one all that well. And I just need to take advantage of the other two sectors when I can. Which is completely fine. It's just it's very, very similar to spa in a sense, where it's gonna take me a while to really figure out what I can do to make it any better. Or if I ever can. Because like at Spa, I've gotten to the point where I kind of just need to make the best out of the first and third sectors. Well, the thing is, if it's tenths, that's fine. But it's I'm losing... I'm dropping at least a second and a half to two seconds in that single sector. That's when it becomes... an a bigger problem, like you'll see here. Well, you won't see here because I haven't set a time. But I was doing 35s while you guys were doing 33s. That was the big difference. And whenever a single sector costs me that much time, that's when it gets frustrating. <laughs> Just a teensy bit too aggressive there. Wow. I think I just clipped the grass behind the curb. Ugh. Man, that went... That went in a hurry. I want to I wanna visually see where... I, I'm pretty sure I clipped the... Uh, hey, bad driver. I'm pretty sure I clipped the... Um, 
Oh, I did. I got way, way too much grass. That's what it felt like, so. <sighs> On the bright side, it felt like what it was, which is I just caught way too much of the grass. On the downside, it doesn't even keep my sector splits. Oh, it does. 54.8. Compared to... Oh, I can't see anybody else's. Hey, 54.8 wouldn't be too bad. That's only half a second off of... Um, Oh, she's doing 34s. All right. Well, there's... <laughs> there's that. <laughs> oh. That's something interesting. And we go into qualifying. Ew, baseball. <laughs> Baseball is one of those funny things. You either you either like it or you don't. And as one friend very accurately explained to me once, baseball is one of those things, if you've ever played it, you tend to really like watching it. If you've never played it, it tends to not be as interesting to watch. <laughs> Qualifying, here we go. Oop. The only change, realistically, is just the fuel. Oh, it's still, let to, it's still set to only six laps. That sucks. This should still be on soft tires, though. I can burn the tires real hard. I mean, that corner alone shows the difference of the fronts. God, these do have so much more grip than the mediums. I just feel like I'm going to burn through the fronts of the mediums too fast. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we can do. The second hot lap is usually my best. So not the out lap, not the first hot lap. But the actual second hot lap. Oh, I forgot, I did, uh, I did increase the radiator blanking on this one as well. So this setup would not last much more than four or five laps at the most anyway. Because the engine would just explode. I you see by the fact that it's already red. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. That is not what I needed. God, that snapped in a hurry. I'll have to check that afterwards and see if I clipped the grass or anything. Because that just... It snapped like I hit something, but it may have just been more braking than I'm used to having in the car there. Still a valid lap for now, though.
I'm getting engine damage most of the lap. <laughs> so like I said, realistically, two hot laps is all I could actually get out of this setup. By the end of the second, the engine will probably go. Obviously, damage is off, so I will just stop myself. But in reality, this is like the edge of the edge of qualifying setup stuff. Oh, maybe I just had too much brake in it. Because that felt identical other than not snapping loose. Felt like a decent sector one for once. Let's see if I can actually translate it into the rest of the lap. Or if I get too greedy. Oh, not too greedy there. Actually lost a little bit of time. I'm still surprised the tires weren't uh, hurt a little bit more after that first slide. I got the fuel just right. <laughs> That's probably the best lap I am going to do. And again, if damage were on, that would have been exploding over the line, <laughs> as you can see from the smoke. Oh. <laughs> That's how far I have to go, just to get around the same lap time that everybody else is getting. And Lem goes to a 32.7 anyway. <laughs> oh, That's alright. On the bright side, there will be at least one pit stop. So I could try and utilize that strategy to my advantage. trying to think. It, it looks like it's estimating about 17 minutes worth of fuel when you start. So in a 24 event... So 17 would take you 34 minutes total. That's with 90 liters. So 10 minutes less of fuel. Ish. So I basically needed to figure out what 10 minutes of fuel is. The lap is one and a half. Ish. It means 10 minutes of fuel would be... Two laps would be three minutes, so four laps would be six. Six laps would be nine minutes-ish. At that point, the extra three seconds on top of the one and a half would kick over. So probably right around seven laps worth, which will be... Forty? No. Fifty-six. So fifty-six liters of fuel will get you about ten minutes. I think. That seems wrong. So I'm using 8 liters a lap. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, yeah, 56. Right? Because 3, 6, 9, 10-ish. Yeah. So 56 liters. So that's 56 liters less I could potentially take, so 90 minus 56, 34? 
No, 44. 44. No, because it's out of 90, not 100. So yeah, 34. So if I take 40-ish liters, so basically, at the start of the race, once I am past the 50 liter mark, then I can toss 40 liters in. I want to go ahead and put that down for myself. So it should already tell me, it should already be set up so that I will take 40 liters, basically, on my pit stop. Now, because I hate running out of fuel, I'm actually going to go safe and go all the way up to 50. Because 50 liters will be more than five, that'll be six-ish laps. And then 90 liters should be 11-ish laps. But yeah, as soon as I burn off 40 liters, I can then come in. Preferably, I want to burn off at least 50, so that I guarantee I will have enough fuel. That's actually going to take me further in the ra into the race than I hoped. What I, what I hoped was that I could come in early, put in the fuel, and have some real clean air to run in. Because as you can see, I'm going to be stuck between people. That, that being said, Jorn and April will probably soar away from me. So it's, it's more a case of if, if my race pace ends up being close to what Bruno and Brussels have. 31.9, holy cow. Let's see, 52.8. <laughs> a full second in the first sector. 20.1... Four tenths there, nineteen three, one tenth there. So the bulk of that pace is all in this sector. As I said, I'm just not good through that sector. I tried putting more downforce on, and it didn't. It only made about three or four tenth difference. I mean, the fact that I basically had to set my car up to explode across the finish line. <laughs> on the second lap. This shows the lengths I have to go just to be a second off base instead of two seconds off base. The strategy is going to make this interesting, though. I mean, I personally love pit strategy anyway. But I feel like it's going to make this real interesting. By the way, because DQs are off, I'm just going to go do some laps. It's also another reason that I'm not a fan of... Another reason I'm not a fan of a forced number of laps is I tend to like to go back to my race setup and get reaccustomed to it at the end of qualifying. I still don't understand why, though. Like, again, I don't, I don't understand what that's supposed to change, like... Like, it doesn't change the way you approach qualifying, you still just go out and do the best lap you can do. Theoretically, you just take one single hot lap, then a second single hot lap. Or you choose to go out and do two or three hot laps instead. Like, it doesn't... It still doesn't change anything. The people who are fast are still going to be fast. Like, I could understand if it was maybe like a Super Bowl thing and you literally get one shot at it. 
Because that one will change the way things happen, because somebody at the top may make a mistake. But as soon as you offer more than one lap, it just doesn't really make sense to limit it at all. There he is. How are you, Brian? That's the latest of the latest. I have a hard time hearing Team speak over this car. No minute, yeah. Not really. <laughs> okay, well then. Like I can hear people are talking, but I can't hear what's being said. Spot. <laughs> One minute left. <laughs> Also, these tires feel much more consistent for me than the softs already, uh, I think which I like. I just want to see how much faster or slower they are. Yeah. We'll have to fix that. 34, not bad. I didn't notice that we had the lap alarm for the before going out. If I keep thinking, I don't, I'll give that another try. Oh, okay, maybe I won't. <laughs> oh, with 17 seconds? Yeah. Oh, no, I meant more. I don't have the left left to do it. The tires do keep heating up, though. After the eight out of six now. Andy was absolutely right about that. It wasn't that hard, was it? Yeah. That's another go. reason I'm a little happier with yeah, the medium. Hey, how are we doing? Good. They have a lower heat than the softs do. That being said, I could have just Here. tossed about 20 more pressure into the softs. Okay, so just so everybody is clear, there is a, a warm-up lap, and then we go to the to the finish line, and then we go when it says green. It's the rolling start. Yeah. Now they're not that angry hamster get eight laps and I got kicked off at six. Because he's cheating. Ah, okay. <laughs> anyway. It doesn't actually count any of the extra laps, don't worry. Oh, okay. Like as soon I as you as soon as you finish your well, in a normal server it'll DQ you, but if that's off yeah. if that's off it just won't count any of the laps after six. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Microphone muted. Good to know. Darren, you have five minutes and no more. <sighs> <laughs> okay, I'm good. Well, first we have to get in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just about finished downloading. Oh, that's true. You have to download the stuff. Alright, Bjorn, are you still on load two of the rear wing? God, that map is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> if I tell you what I'm on. Okay. Okay, I'm on low one. But this one sounds so much better. Okay. Have fun. <laughs> At least for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> I guess I maybe even no. <laughs> no. I'm still on two. Alright. I think I'm breaking too early for that corner. I wonder if I'm actually exiting that corner differently. I didn't think about that until I saw how Apex exited that corner. That might be partially my problem. Well, that's not a one second problem, but that might be part of it. Nice. Okay. Ah, there he is. Finally made it there. Yeah. Yeah, that set up just Thank you. God, the car feels great through the bus stop, though. Yeah, we still change our setup? Yeah. Is yeah, that Lem set up for me. LT1? No, park for me. Is that a set up for LT1? Yep. I think it's the same car. All the same physics, right? Yeah. 
but that setup I just sent out is good for all the cars. But it does feel really solid on the race setup, though. Yeah, just watch out for the killer brakes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess the April uses a really aggressive brake pressure. Yeah, my brakes definitely aren't about safety. Yeah, still too early there. Need to brake at the start of the second set of cones, I think. And the boring Daytona banking. really hard to enter that side by side. Cause it's one of those corners that you use all of the road and then some when you're breaking into it. It's also a matter of, it, unfortunately, because I'm slow in the first sector, that actually really hurts because I need to stay, I need to be able to stay up with people because I can absolutely pass people on the straights. My car is set up with minimum rear wing. So I have plenty of top line, top end speed. So it's just a matter of keeping up in this section more or less. Okay, he just did a 32 while I did a 35, by the way. So loose out of that corner. Oh, that's a much better break point. I'm still confused by why he lets it sail off into the corner of the banking. Because Daytona banking is not progressive, it's the same all the way up. Completely missed my break point. <laughs> One hundred percent blew the break point there. <laughs> oh, I lost. I intentionally lost a bunch of ground there to make up for it. I was just, I was thinking about the banking and visualizing it in my mind, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh right, there's a fast corner here. That's probably the best first corner I've ever done. <laughs> Being able to stay in it and save it is fun. Definitely make that breakpoint work, but it's right on the edge. Either way, again, this is going to be interesting. It doesn't take that many laps to burn off fuel. Oh, that's probably the best bust up I've ever done. If I can mimic that even once in the race, I'll be happy. Wow, I'm putting a lot of heat in the tires as well. We Oh, I was going to sail it off into that corner. And here we go. This is going to be... Make sure I have that, 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 that. Alright. Good to go. As good as we can be. Oh, man. So basically, so if you're not familiar with the rolling start, basically we all 
slowly go out. Follow the safety car around for one lap. The safety car will pull in and then we go. Now theoretically in real life they would start you in the um, they would start you in the pits and you'd do like three or four of these, but obviously for a game they don't really want to do that to you. We also need to be careful how much fuel we burn off here. We don't want to waste a ton. So, in, in essence, actually using the least amount of fuel here is the most important thing during this formation lap. It's more important than putting heat in the tires, it's more important than putting heat in the brakes. Just using as little fuel as possible. Actually, speaking of that, I can actually just use the clutch pedal. Just Sorry disengage the engine for a while. Are you worry okay? Unfortunately, I think I'm going to be using at least two or three liters. To use, I've literally tried to use as little as possible. <laughs> oh, having to brake there sucks. Cause it just means I have to accelerate out like, and use more. Should be able to lift here or clutch in here. Then once we get out of the bus stop, we will probably, for the most part, keep it in fourth and then just drop. Um, once we get into this corner, we'll pretty much drop it down to about second and get ready for the start instead. So I've done as good as I could on fuel. Only used two liters. That's not bad. A regular lap around here uses 8 for comparison, <laughs> so that's really not bad. But now we need to start thinking about the actual start. So yeah, I'm going to have to be in second gear. Start dragging the brake a little bit here. Let's put some heat in the brake so it's not terribly cold. Now we get ready to do what we can. That means I'm going to need most of that 50 liters, though. I do like rolling starts. Again, the brakes are very cold. <laughs> the tires are very cold. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. All right, we're just going to have to take the cut through here. What? Yeah, well, somebody re-rendered me and then that's it. <laughs> I'm amazed I did not hit anybody. But we have flat spotted tires. We're going to have to change tires on the pit stops, which really sucks. <laughs> really, really sucks. Oh, man. <laughs> I couldn't tell where... Uh... Oops. <laughs> I could tell where histogram's spin was gonna end up, so I had to just oh, be careful. Throw up there. And restart race mode. No, no, no. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, it's okay. racing. Absolutely. It's racing. Come on, guys. Keep on going. Put a restart on. No, no. Put a restart on. No, 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 no. I vote for restart. Ah. Uh, 
Okay, we are set up to take tires. Good, good, good. I wanted to make sure we were set up to take tires. It sucks, because my plan was not to have to take tires, and that is going to eat a lot of time. But we're taking a ton of fuel anyway, so it shouldn't make much of a difference. I guess it I guess it depends on how these are set. If these are set like real life, then it will take more time, because you can't do tires and fuel at the same time. This first stint is going to suck. I need to make this as soon as I burn off 50 liters. So as soon as I am 40 liters or less, I need to come in. These tires are not good anymore at all. Like, these tires are really unhappy now. I mean, you can even see the wear on the right sides are way lower than they should be. I guess if there is a bright side, it's that it's limited to one side. So when I turn to the right, or turn to the left, I should say, and it's using those tires heavily, then they even back out for a minute. It is a big vibration, though. Ah, uh, I'm just so disappointed with myself. All I had to do was lift a little bit there and not clip that grass. Realistically, I should have just lifted, let that person through, and followed them into turn two. But I thought I could fight back on the hairpin. Ugh. Unfortunately, it's also negatively impacted my brake distances and braking points. Like, I actually still get pretty aggressive in turn one there. I am pulling away from the car ahead, which is good, but I am not catching Brussels at all. Like, not even slightly. It means I really need to try and pick up my pace, which is bad, because it's... The car is getting worse and worse every single lap that I have to stay on these tires. Like, in an actual car, in real life, the vibration from this would mean you'd have to come in and change your tires no matter what. Like, it's it's that bad. <laughs> this thing would be ripping bolts out. Especially on the high-speed banking here. Little bit deep that time. On the bright side, that does mean I get a brand new, fresh set of tires for the second half of the race. <laughs> Again, the downside being my pit stop should take considerably longer. But it's also not the easiest pit road to get on. Because you want to approach it extremely fast and break it the last possible second. So there might be some people that actually flat spot their tires into pit lane don't change tires and then have to deal with bad tires for the second half of the race. That is definitely a possibility as well. Just want to make sure my headlights were on. I guess I guess the big green circle in the bottom center <laughs> should have told me that.
By the way, you see it's four laps out of 24, but it, it will not go to 24 laps. Laps here are more than a minute long. Wow, I did a 33.9 on these tires? <laughs> what? All right, I'm happy with that. Oh, that's not ideal. Suddenly I've got pace in it, even though it's, I guess, I guess as the temperature comes down and the sun starts setting, that is good for my pressure settings and it's good for the medium tire. About 10 liters away from being able to stop. I have a hard time spotting my break point for that corner at night. So we're probably going to lose some time there. Although again, once it goes full night, it's actually, oddly enough, it's a little bit easier. Once it transitions to full night instead of just sunset. We're actually catching second, third, and fourth right now. Although, obviously, this lap is quite a far way off our previous pace. And passing is going to be tricky. Well, I guess passing won't be super tricky for me, because I am just quick in a straight line in this thing. Wow, well, third place has a maximum speed of 328. First is 330. So they've gotten the draft at some point. I think next lap we will be able to come in. Now I have to remember what button I have it set to. Oh, that's headlights. Oh, I think I know what button I have it set to. There we go. Taking 50 liters of fuel. Oh no. That was really unfortunate. <laughs> On the bright side, damage is off. On the downside, our tires will be even worse. <laughs> God, that snapped in a hurry. Do I still have this set to brake balance? I do. I'm just going to have to put more front brake in it. I think I can ease out of that over time, but like it's just going to be safer to move it to about 57. Oh my word. The tires are so bad now. That really sucks because I was catching 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And that basically erased all of the time I had and then some. We need to make our pit entry good. I don't know where the actual pit lane limiter starts. It should be right here. I'm probably the only car that's going to be in for a while. Most everybody else should wait until they need to come in. So we're going to have to make hay while the sun shines. Uh, it looks like they do fuel in tires at the same time. That's good. So realistically, I'm not losing all that much. Because the fuel took until 23 anyway. And the tires do take a while. So I only lost about 10 seconds total. Or more. Why is it not letting me go? Is it 32 seconds total? Okay, so maybe it... Okay, so it vis... Okay, never mind. So it cost me 32 seconds. So it visually did the tires at the same time, but numbers-wise, it did not. Alright, that's... I don't think I can make up 30 seconds. That sucks.
On the bright side, my tires are not vibrating violently anymore. That is a very big bright side. Downside, it will be harder to put heat in the tires at night. Just want to verify my brake balance is the same. Alright, good. Want to make sure it didn't get reset. My car getting hot is weird. I guess I was on the throttle a lot in the pit lane. It should come down though. It should sit around 90 something. But now I just need to I need to knock out some really fast laps in a row. Cuz again, everybody else's stop is only going to be about 20 some odd seconds. Unless they also take tires. If they take tires, then I'm fine. If none of them take tires, then I'm just screwed. Some people may just not check the default, though, and take tires anyway, which will be good for me. But again, now, the only thing I can really do is just concentrate as hard as I can on going quickly here. It's really not going to be until the uh, lap after this one that my tires are at a decent temperature anyway. Because again, nighttime it drops pretty hugely in terms of overall temperature. So instead of the air temperature being 29, the track temp is 29. But looking at the people who have made stops, every, on the left hand side, anybody who has a 1 in brackets next to their name, is somebody who has made a stop already. So it looks like a lot of people are taking tires. Which makes me think a lot of people are probably on softs instead of mediums. And considering I had to change them, I should have been on softs anyway, but... Realistically, I should not have flat spotted my tires that aggressively either. We might actually pick up two spots here. We will get our lap back on them. Looks like the leader in second place are pushing their fuel as far as it'll go. But we did actually pick up a spot in that pit lane switch. Because we were in fifth and now we're in fourth. So even with our mistakes, we've made we've made good use out of our pit stop and our outlaps afterwards to make up for that a little bit. It's one of the nice things about utilizing the free air that you get after a stop. Which may seem silly because there were cars in front of me, but they were far enough ahead that it was still free-ish air. Yeah, looking at Lem, it looks like she did not take tires, which is the optimal thing to do. So as you can see, I was, before the pit stops, I was about 10, 15-ish seconds behind them, 50. <laughs> so the mistakes plus the um, 30 seconds on the tires. So if I get less than 30 seconds behind Lem by the end of this, that means the tires cost me at least one spot. But it was literally in a position where I could not not take them. The vibration was so, so huge. Bjorn still hasn't come in for tires or for fuel. He's pushing it to the very last second. That's surprising, actually. Also, imagine this. If you don't flat spot your tires immediately, they feel great even four laps into a stint. 
Who would have thought? And now I'm getting the expected tire wear out of them as well, so they're just... One of the reasons I wanted to pick mediums for the race is they're just a very, very, extremely consistent tire. So until you get down to like 60%, for the first 40%, they feel almost the same every single lap. So it makes it a very, very predictable tire to be on. Whereas at least for me on the softs, about every 10% they change how they feel. Drastically enough to almost make you want to drive a little bit differently. Oh, unfortunately, I'm doing 35s now. I mean, I guess I do have more fuel on board, but I'm just losing time somewhere. Because I was doing 33s on crap tires before. You're in finally pitted. That's a much better turn one. Little slide on exit. I do love this track. It's such a weird track that shouldn't be fun. Like, it should be very boring. But for whatever reason, it ends up being so fun to me. Also, I really like this brake balance more. I feel like I should have gone to a more front bias earlier. I just wasn't having any problems with it, so I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah, only five minutes left, there's no way I'm catching first, second, or third. Because unfortunately, Lem is actually faster than me now. <laughs> I have a bad habit of clipping that grass on the first right-hand part of the bus stop. And it makes the car turn really nicely. But it makes the car turn really sharply as well. <laughs> It's a little scary. But if you catch it just right, you can almost slide into the second half of the bus stop. Obviously, in a real race, you wouldn't do that. It's too harsh to the tires. Besides being incredibly unpredictable. Yeah, this is the old LMP1 Panos. It's a great car. I think I'm actually braking too early for that section, too. On the bright side, I seem to have fourth locked up. Oh, I just did a 33. All right. So I got my pace back. I just need to be a little more aggressive everywhere to get back to it. I wish somebody would make the Delta Wing. That thing's actually looks like it'd be really fun to try and drive. But the Delta Wing is actually a combination of Panos and um, Nissan. Nissan dumped a ton of money into it. And at least in IMSA, they actually got it to a point where it's reliable and quick most of the time. One of the main problems is it just tends to get hit by other cars. <laughs> and then before that, in years past, its other main problem has been reliability. Which, for such a new design, that doesn't surprise me. But most of the places they take it, it's quick enough. It's just a matter of making it reliable and then having other cars not hit it. But basically, now that that program is over, it's going to be interesting to see what Panos end up doing. If they end up going back into prototypes, if they go to GTs, if they go back and do a different road car. Because they haven't done that in a very long time either. Funny enough, though, for me at least, the biggest thing in this car is just the sound. 
It's got one of the greatest engine notes. God, it's so weird. You just sort of have to break and turn for that corner and hope it's in the same spot when it's completely in shadow like that. Oh, this is going to be a really slow lap. I'm actually catching second and third now, but again, there's not enough time left. Especially not to erase 40 some odd seconds. On the bright side, I'm still more than 30 seconds behind, so realistically, having to change tires didn't cost me any positions. It still cost me 30 seconds total, but it didn't cost me any actual positions, so it doesn't hurt as bad. <laughs> Wow, that was a really good first sector, though. I can put in one or two 32s here, I'll be happy. Or 33s. I get so much understeer there when I can't get it to cut back. Pretty sure this will be the last lap. Yeah, because laps are a minute and a half, so. Yeah, this will definitely be the last lap. Getting a lot of understeer and right handers now. have been abusing that left front a little too much. God, events like this make me wish I had the time, energy, and commitment to do an endurance style race. Because I still feel like a race like this with like a hundred people in different classes would be so much fun. The toughest part for me would be finding a group that wasn't a bunch of endlessly fast people combined with a group to race with that wasn't um, hell-bent on being ultra-competitive. And the mix of those two things is not easy to find. Uh, I'm disappointed with fourth, but mostly just in myself, because I know I could have done better. On the bright side, I didn't take anybody out at the start, though. I very easily could have done that. <laughs> Engine? How... I thought damage was off. How did they blow their engines? Oh, that's unfortunate. Wow, it really shook up the <laughs> standings there when it transitioned. Uh, 
Oh, so it just flat out just utterly destroyed the engine. Oh, that sucks. It was fun. I just I I blew the start really poorly. Thank you. Oh, that was a nice run. Yeah. Yeah, that just went from bad to worse. I couldn't find reverse for some reason. Uh, <laughs> Poor Frustles. I guess had to pull both paddles at once to get it. Yeah, that's what it ended up being. Yeah. Uh, mostly just annoyed with myself, basically. User disconnected I was wondering what channel. happened there in the pit lane. I was just sitting there taking my stop, and then suddenly you're reversing towards me. Like, whoa, what are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was that was after I'd been sat facing a, a tire wall for a, about ten minutes whilst I was trying to figure out how to reverse. Yeah, and then the pits <laughs> for some reason the pits didn't pick me up. I don't know if I ever shot it or something. Oh, poor process. Right. So then I had to battle with trying to find reverse again. Uh, but then they <laughs> all the issues to help and serve the car, I guess. Yeah, that's right. They put their cups of yeah. tea down and they got they put their crumpets down and actually got the um... sound muted. Anyway. At least from my perspective, it's just, it's just unfortunate, because I... Ugh. I mean, I guess even if I had ruined the tire, hadn't ruined the tires at the start, the chance of me doing that same thing into turn three is relatively high, so I probably would have done that as well anyway, but... Mm, that's alright. Just disappointed in myself that I ruined my tires twice, because if I didn't, again, if I didn't have to save tires, change tires, that's... 32 seconds that I save on my pit stop. And the mediums would have worked out beautifully all the way through as well. Because they were they were so, so, so consistent. The only thing was I was losing the front left a tiny bit, but either way. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> they can't all be amazing. And it was still, again, driving that car on that track is still very, very enjoyable. It's one of those situations where the event itself is still neat, but it's it just stings. Because you did it yourself, to yourself, and you know you could have done better, but either way. I was still, I don't know, I still enjoyed it, as always, but I just, mm. I wanted to run at Lem and, uh, and the person whose name started with an S, I can't remember now. <laughs> I think it was Andy, but, um, ugh. I feel like if I could have gotten up to them, I could have battled with them. But either way. It was still really fun. Ugh. All I had to do was lift out of the chicane on the first corner. On the first lap. Just had to lift that tiny bit. But again, on the bright side, when I went through the grass, I at least got it stopped before I careened into the uh, hairpin. That would have been much, much worse. <laughs> if I had not slowed it down before I hit the hairpin, I would have ran into like four people. But either way, as I said, I still had fun with it. Um, but that'll be it for tonight. Next stream will be Monday. Monday and Tuesday will be F1 2016 again. Should be fun. Just career stuff. Um, so should be fun. <laughs> and then this weekend is also Monza. So that'll be fun to watch. But at least for tonight, I still had fun, even though I messed up again. At least I only have myself to blame. But I still had lots of fun. Hopefully you all had lots of fun. And as always, thank you all very much for stopping by. I will see you all later.